Hey there, everybody. It's RevKev here. Pray you are having an amazing day today. So I was at the movies last night, went back and saw this guy again. I was going to go see another movie, but based on the feedback of that other movie, which will not be discussed, I went to go see this one instead. So this is my second time seeing The Joker. Now, I've not done any kind of review or reaction to this. I did a reaction video about the trailer, um, which got some decent traction, but I want to talk a little bit about The Joker and, uh, and again, really from my worldview, my Christian perspective, a um, couple of quick things, a short video. One of the things, like, I love this movie. Like, this movie just hit me and it gripped me and captivated me from beginning to end. It was beautifully filmed. It was, the music was incredible. I love kind of like the violin kind of, you know, pieces of music was just incredibly powerful. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal of the Joker, his acting was absolutely incredible. All the supporting characters and actors and actresses around his character were top notch. This was a beautifully made movie. Now, it was disturbing as well. And not as disturbing as, you know, some other movies out there, you know, with the level of violence. I am sensitive to violence and, and I do try to kind of guard my heart against certain levels of violence it just doesn't sit well with me um i thought the violence in this movie was appropriate for the story that they were telling it wasn't violence for violence sake it wasn't being gory for gory sake but it just fit really well um but be mindful uh, you know if you are someone that, that likes to avoid overly violent movies that there are a couple of scenes that i was like this in <laughs> but but what really struck me the most about this now just a little bit of a sidebar, and this might be a little bit of a spoiler, but I don't think so. But a lot of people are discussing online just how much of this was real and how much of this was actually going on in Arthur's head. Um, the main character, Joker, his name was Arthur. How much of this was imaginary and, and fantasy? And so there was this tension between what was the real world and what was fake, what was in his mind. And even one of the big questions at the end is, is this even the real Joker? Like, is this the Joker from the Batman mythology? Now, I'm just going to go under the assumption that it, it is. Um, that's a debate for another video. Um, I'm just going to go under the assumption for this discussion that it is the Joker. That it's the Joker as we know him. I mean, it was set up with the origin of Bruce Wayne. The death of the parents was all brought in there. It all tied in together. So just based on that, let's just for argument's sake, for discussion sake today, this is the Joker. What was incredibly powerful for me with this story was how easily avoided his origin was. It was completely avoidable, but it was completely inevitable that this was going to happen, that the Joker was going to be created. And, and, and that tension was just so incredible. It's like, wow, it looks so easy to fix this. But society's problems, the problems of the world, the problems of the city, the problems of the family, the problems of abuse, the problems of mental health, everything just completely, totally stacked against him that made it absolutely inevitable that the Joker was going to rise from this story. And that tension just sat with me. And, and as a pastor, I found that incredibly powerful. And I also found that incredibly heartbreaking. I mean, I have a heart for people. I, the idea that people are in the world are suffering is heartbreaking. The, the people that people, the thought that people are lonely, that people are struggling, and nobody knows that. No, no, no one knows it. It, it is heartbreaking for me. Uh, you know, and just as a human being, just as, as a person who who loves people and and wants the best for people, and and it reminded me of a passage, just one little verse in the Bible that talks about how you know the church is supposed to be a body and how we're all in this thing called life together. And one person is not more important than the other person. And the Apostle Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He says, when one part suffers, we all suffer, right? So in kind of the church, in the family, in, in, in our communities, when one part is suffering, we all suffer. And sometimes we're just so obsessed with our own problems, our own stress, our own lives, our own pain, that we forget other people might have things worse like this guy did and we're so obsessed with ourselves that we can't even see it and when we're not doing something about it then eventually we suffer because we're part of the problem we kind of created the problem and so that 
just really was rattling my brain last night. And so I was praying about that and just saying, God, like, make sure I have eyes to see people who are hurting. I can't solve everybody's problems. I can't heal the whole world. Um, but I can help one and, and I can pray for one and I can do my part um, to be a blessing to other people. So, uh, yeah, that just was really resonating with me last night. Like the, the, the story of the Joker, this movie was so powerful. If someone would have just prevented him from being adopted by, by, by his adoptive mother, what would have changed? If someone could have stopped the abuse, what would have changed? If the city wouldn't have cheaped out and canceled funding for his medication, what would have changed? It meant even to the point, like, you know, if the city would have collected the garbage, would that have created the environment? Like, there's so many little steps in the process to create this Joker. That was, it was completely unavoidable. It was going to happen. Nothing could stop it. But what if one of these little things could have, you know, been different? And, man, that was powerful. Just loved it. Anyways, you know, so this is just my reaction as Pastor, as Rev Kev. So I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. A uh, huge thank you to all the new subscribers to the channel. just means the world to me. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day and God bless you.